Hey guys, happy Thursday. This is Josh from Working Man Reads, and thank you for dropping by. If you're new, I do horror, sci-fi, fantasy here on the channel. Please consider liking, commenting, subscribing if you're new here. If not, if you're back from before, maybe one of the 262, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you guys. You are so, so cool, and uh, I love the support I get here on the channel. But if you haven't heard of the uh, today I'm going to be doing a book haul. It's just kind of the books I've been accumulating. I am not even reading any of these right now. I have so many books to read, but I do still purchase books because there is a never-ending TBR, like we all know. But I'm sure you guys have heard of this one. It has been making its rounds, and it actually um, goes to... Yeah, so all proceeds for this anthology will be no donated to First book, which I believe um, is a very good cause. So I did purchase this book. It is Local Haunts. And the cool thing about this, it is, is it's a horror tube anthology. So it's all my buddies pretty much in this. All my friends here on Horror Booktube Land. And I wanted to give them a shout out and definitely purchase this and uh, definitely in, add it in my video. So please go support this. It's got an awesome cover that I believe was done by uh, one of the gentlemen here on YouTube, and uh, yeah, so a cover by Cameron Rubik, and yeah, he does his own covers, and really awesome. R. St. Clair edited this, uh, back cover by Luke Erhen, or something like that, so definitely, I'm not going to read the synopsis, because it is a bunch of short stories based on local haunts, and I actually was trying to work on a story for this, and I was, I, I liked it, it just wasn't a great story, so... Um, I had I had some people read it and it just didn't make the cut for me so I didn't want it to be my first release so there's that and then I did go to a secondhand bookstore and I'm never lucky enough to find secondhand horror locally in my area there must be a dude just out there buying them all or a lady out there just buying them all but I did find Breeder by Douglas Clegg. And uh, this one's pretty cool. It's got like a little baby bassinet. A new horror is born. Author of Goat Dance. And uh, Robert R. McCammon says, or uh, yeah, McCammon says, a weaver of nightmares. My daughter's being rowdy upstairs. But yeah, so near a thriving metropolis, a grotesque creature feeds in secret on its helpless prey. A human, a happy young couple hoping to start a family, moves into a decrepit townhouse and into the heart of the festering nightmare. The spawn on the, of the damned is re reaping, bursting open with unholy fury, ready to unleash a hideous, monstrous evil. So that's Breeder by Douglas Clegg. It has horrible reviews, but some good ones on Goodreads. So you know what? I got it anyways, because sometimes you just tell Goodreads to go take a hike. I also find, found, I don't know if this was like a thriller or a horror novel, I think it is horror because I've seen some people saying it was awesome, like uh, horror wise, but Robert Dunbar, I found The Pines, and uh, yeah, so maybe I'll read this uh, synopsis later, but it's pretty cool. It's, it's, uh, it's basically a story about like this woman who moves to this, uh, like, all right, we'll just read the synopsis. After her husband died, Athena Monroe often wondered why she stayed in the dilapidated old farmhouse buried deep in the harsh, blighted New Jersey pine barrens. Perhaps it was because her mysterious, afflicted young son seemed to feel such strong ties to the area's primal swamps and stunted forests. So basically, there's creepy forest. So I'm in on that. I'm gonna stop right there because I'm not, I'm not reading too good today. It's been a busy week. So, luckily, I'm alive, and that's all that matters, guys. But um, there is some nonfiction at the end of this, so um, I might, I might not include it. But I do read some nonfiction from time to time. Hope everybody else is having a good week. Feel free to let me know down below, like how the weather's been. Up here, it's been definitely getting a little bit more chilly. We're getting into, you know, fall and uh, whatnot. But I did get a lot on eBay 
for a Ayn Rand. I think that's how you pronounce it. I've always said Ayn Rand because I'm a uh, imbecile from uh, Buffalo. But uh, yeah, so Ayn Rand, I got Atlas Shrugged, which is like her most well known. It's also huge. This particular copy is 183 pages. Ayn Rand. Yeah, Ayn Rand. I don't know. The, the, uh, the audiobook says Ayn Rand. So, I don't know if she might be English, but I also got the Fountainhead. Now, all these are like, I mean, this one's slightly maybe read once, but look how, look how straight. This is like never read. Brand new. Like, brand, well, used, obviously, but like basically brand new. So, that's pretty cool. So, I got Fountainland. I also got We the Living by her. Also, again, spine is in great shape. So, and then the guy was like, hey, if you buy this for this price, I'll include the other book. And I didn't even know what he meant by the other book, but it was Anthem, and it's a hardcover version. So, and that's the one I'm reading um, for audiobook right now, and it's only like, this is 105 pages, and it's pretty cool. I am reading this one. Um, I feel it may get me in trouble uh, when I review this, because... It's kind of how I foresee society going. Like, basically, you have no personality in this book, like, uh, as a character. You lose your name. You are basically a number. And then if, it, it, when you hit 16 or 18, they, the society or the government decides what you were going to do with your life. So the main character is told that he is going to be a street sweeper, and that's it. He can have no other aspirations in life. He doesn't go to college. He can't learn anything. Uh, you don't even pick your partner that you're going to be with. You basically are told to go to a certain location um, when girls turn 18, and then you create a child and that's it there's no like love involved or emotions or anything like that and basically the government decides everything for you it is an overarching societal um just basically mandates everything so which isn't really what i think is going to happen to society but i do think that there's this over like where people are losing their individuality a little bit um people are afraid to be who they want to be um they think that they're like pigeonholed into doing something that they don't enjoy and things like that. So it's kind of neat. It's a very interesting dystopian sci-fi novel. If you haven't tried Ayn, Ayn Rand or Ayn Rand, definitely check her out. Next, I also, my mother, got, I don't know if I said this in my one video, but yeah, my mother got me uh, Dolores Claiborne um, by Stephen King. So I don't know if I did say that in my last video. If I did, I apologize, guys, but I will get to that eventually. It'll just probably add the go to the collection right now um i i do have a buddy read with um paul over at the yankee southerner we're going to be reading insomnia on insomnia next month i got my uh pretty cool mug it's pretty sweet yeah i think that's pretty cool it's got like a uh, rosie the riveter busting down the duopoly um so i also found this at the used bookstore and this artwork was just sick but look at that cover. So it's by Harry Harrison, and it is West of Eden. And I think that there's like, it's like a little bit of like, a, it might be a romance involved and things like that. But basically, I think that there's like dinosaurs are now the um, driving species on Earth. And like humans are basically not even at work, like doing anything. So it's pretty cool. I also got, I think this is kind of like an indie sci-fi book, but I did order this because it was recommended because I'm reading Ruins of the Galaxy, and uh, it's called At Galaxy's Edge, Legioneer by Anne Spock Cole, or it might be two authors, As Anne Spock and Cole, so yeah, I like the back, it says like, the galaxy is a dumpster fire, a hot stinking dumpster fire, and most days... I don't know if the Legionnaires are putting out the flames or fanning them into Inferno. So, yeah, that's Galaxy's Edge. And I just, yeah, that just looked bomb. Um, so next, I have a couple uh, non-fiction. So, I got this one. Don't hurt people and don't take their stuff. So, um, yeah, and it's got, like, the rules for liberty on the back. So, I've been um, researching other... Uh, political groups 
as of late. I don't want to get into any politics in the comments, but I do read the books to educate myself because voting blindly is dumb. But, uh, yeah, so H.P. Lovecraft, I got uh, Classic Horror Stories. I got this for five bucks, you guys, at Barnes & Noble. Um, so I definitely think I'll be reading some more Lovecraft down the line. I did, I do want to venture into more. And plus this cover, like, so cool for, like, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Look at how cool that is. You know, who wouldn't, look at the little guy on the top. Pretty sick, so can't beat it for, I think it's got, like, most of his stories in it. So let's see. Yeah, it's got, uh, so I'll, like, hold it up. If you guys have read any of these, definitely tell me, um, which ones I should read. I've read The Call of Cthulhu already. I'm sure I could just work my way through or look it up. I, the Dunwich Horror sounds pretty solid. So, yeah, definitely know, let me know, guys, like, what you've read. And then, finally, this one's pretty well known. Um, I'm excited to actually bust into this one. It's called... The Libertarian Mind by David Bowes. Um, I actually listened to this guy's, uh, he did a podcast and like an, a lecture on basically the founding principles of that party. So it's pretty cool. So yeah, I've been, uh, been doing a lot of stuff, but not reading enough because I've been working, but I really appreciate you guys. I hope you guys are enjoying your work week. Um, or if you're home, you're being safe and enjoying your time with your family. Definitely go check out some of these books for yourself. They're pretty fun. Um, I'm definitely busting out some uh, Sarita and hopefully in the remainder of the month. I did finish Run by Blake Crouch. That was awesome. I'll definitely get a review up for that soon. Um, along with uh, another sci-fi uh, book that I did listen to. And then I'm hopefully finishing my short story collection by Robert Atone this week. I've just, I've had a busy work week, so I'm trying to survive. Um, but uh, thank you guys for checking in. This has been Working Man Reads. Peace.